Good morning. It is May 17th. This is Sunday School for the Older Kids. This is my niece Jade's birthday today, so that's exciting. And we are going to be talking about Solomon. Hopefully you've been you've been on the different lessons and learn about learning about David and about Solomon. And hopefully you remember the three things you're supposed to have for the lesson today. You need to have your Bible, you need to have a pen or pencil, and you need to have notes. Now you can get the notes off of the Google Drive, ask your parents to print it off. This is what it looks like. Or just like every other time, you can just use pen and, pen and pencil if you want to. All right, and so go ahead and grab those three things and look up 1 Kings chapter six in your Bibles, okay? 1 Kings chapter six. Go ahead and pause this so you can have all three things and you can have your Bible open to 1 Kings chapter six, all right? And then when you're ready, we'll go back. Hopefully you'll have your Bible at 1 Kings chapter 6. All right. So we have been learning for James 1.5. We've been talking about how Solomon needed wisdom. Do you remember that? And so we talked about how we need wisdom. And this verse says, if you need wisdom, which we all do, then you need to ask God for some. And he's not going to chew you out. He's not going to upbraid you or scold you, but he's going to give it liberally. He's going to give you lots and as much as you need and more. All right. So definitely need to be asking God for wisdom. So let's say the verse together. And I'm excited for us to see each other so I can let you pick out of the prize box when you say this. Hopefully that'll happen soon. So James 1.5, let's say it together. Are you ready? James 1.5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. James 1, 5. All right, and then we've also been working on singing it, so let's sing it together. being able to learn this song. It's starting to get stuck in my head. All right, the other song that we've been working on is Psalm 32, 5. And this talks about how when we ask Jesus to forgive us our sins, he will. Let's say it together. Ready? Psalm 32, 5. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. All right, Psalm 32, five, let's try that one too. sing that one as well. Okay, we are going to pray together, and then we are going to start talking about Solomon and what happened today. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for these kids. I pray that you would bless the lesson today, help your name to be glorified, help the students to learn, and help me to have wisdom as I teach. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we talked about Solomon last week, and how he asked God for wisdom, and God gave him more wisdom than any other person in the world ever has had and ever will have. And he was so wise that he was even able to help decide 
who was the real mother when two women were fighting over the same baby. Do you remember that story? Well, David had another desire, something else that he wanted to do for God. Do you remember that David had said he wanted to build a temple for God? He wanted to give God a permanent dwelling place. Well, God had told him he couldn't do that. Do you remember why God told David he couldn't build the, the temple? It was because David was so busy with wars. And God said, you're not going to be able to build the temple. I want your son to build the temple instead, but you can collect supplies for him if you want to. So now David's son, Solomon, is on the throne and he decides to build the temple. So at this point, the tabernacle was the place where the people were worshiping. Do you remember when we talked about the tabernacle? The tabernacle was the place, it was very portable, so that when they were traveling through the desert, they could carry it along with them. We talked about this a while back and the different pieces of furniture that were in the tabernacle. Those pieces of furniture were going to come over into the new temple too. But this was a place that was just, even though it was very fancy, it was still just a tent. It was a tabernacle, which means a temporary dwelling place. And Solomon and David both wanted to give God a real building, a temple for him to dwell in. So David, here's the first thing in your notes. David helped prepare for the temple by gathering materials. Now, when David and Nathan, the prophet, discussed the building of the temple, God gave David very clear requirements for what was going to be the measurements for the temple and what was going to be in it and everything involved with the temple. And so David passed those plans to his son David, son Solomon. So that's the second thing on your notes, all right? You got that? God gave his son Solomon the plans for the temple so that Solomon could build it exactly the way God wanted to. So Solomon started. Now, we started a building about a year ago. Do you remember when we all stood outside in the grass and some of the people had shovels and they dug little holes in the ground and we said, this is where our new building is going to be? We wanted to build a place where we, should, we could worship God. And that's exactly what Solomon was doing, which is pretty neat. But Solomon wanted to make things very, very fancy. When we had looked at the picture earlier, do you remember the golden candlestick and all of these things that were in the temple? Um, God gave Solomon measurements and specific requirements for things, but Solomon wanted it to be very fancy and very special. So before, we talked about this a minute ago, before the temple was built, the people worshipped at the tabernacle. So that's number three. The people worshipped at the tabernacle. Okay, so what do you think number four is going to be? The temple was a beautiful permanent house of, what do you think they did in the temple? It was a house of worship. And Solomon wanted to be able to have a place where they could worship and celebrate God, just like we did when we built our new building, that we could have a fancy building and a bigger building where we could come and sit and worship God together. So we're going to start doing that pretty soon, hopefully. And Solomon had thousands of people working on his temple. We didn't have thousands of people working on our church, did we? We had five families and the Andersons, and then a lot of people were helping every once in a while too. But Solomon had thousands of people working on building his temple, and they made things really fancy. They put carvings on the woods, wood, they covered all the inside with cedar wood, which is a really fancy wood that smells really pretty and is kind of reddish. And then they carved all kinds of really cool things on there, flowers and angels and all kinds of amazing things. And then they covered it in gold. They made a basin. When we, when we talked about the tabernacle, we talked about the basin where the priests could wash themselves and be ready for serving God. Well, Solomon made a basin that had 12,000 gallons in it. All right, so look at this. This is one gallon. All right, now, I want you to imagine 12,000 of these. That's a really big swimming pool. <laughs> and that is the size of the 
basin that Solomon made for the temple. He made everything beautiful and, and ornate. That means super, super fancy and covered it with gold. It took us, it took our builders and the people who worked on our building one year to build our church building. Guess how long it took thousands of builders to build Solomon's temple? Seven years. It took them seven years to build it. When they finally got the building, oh, I, I already told you this one, that Solomon used cedar wood. I skipped that one. Uh, Solomon used beautiful cedar wood in making the building. And when they finally got it built, when they finally got it finished after seven years, it was amazing. Look at this building, it's ginormous. And there's gold everywhere and it's fancy everywhere. And this was a very special place. And Solomon wanted to dedicate it to the Lord. And in 1 Kings chapter 6, we find that Solomon was visited by God with a special message. In verse um, 11, it says, and the word of the Lord. Are you looking right there? 1 Kings 6, 11. Go ahead and pause it if I'm going too fast. 1 Kings 6, 11. And the word of the Lord came to Solomon saying, concerning this house, which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my judgments and keep all my commandments to walk in them, then will I perform my word with thee, which I spake unto David thy father. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will not forsake my people Israel. He says, if you're going to obey my commandments and you're going to follow my word, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to dwell with you. To dwell, dwell with you means live with you and be with you. That's a pretty awesome promise. And Solomon was so excited when the temple was done. As a matter of fact, they had a huge celebration. They moved this piece of furniture the Ark of the Covenant. Do you remember when we talked about the Ark of the Covenant? Do you remember what it was covered in? It's covered in gold and the two cherubim. Those are angels on the top and inside they had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and one other thing that I, oh, the Ten, the Ten Commandment tablets. And they moved it from the tabernacle into the temple. So here's where the Ark of the Covenant is. Do you see the red circle? I just, here, I'll circle it again. That's where they moved the Ark of the Covenant into a very special place called the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant was a picture that represented God's presence. So we talked about how the Philistines conquered and captured the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, we talked about how they celebrated when we got it back and then David didn't bring it back to the temple correctly. And the Uzzah reached out and touched it with his hand and he died right away, do you remember? Because this piece of furniture was a very precious and very important piece of furniture because it represented God's presence. And so they moved it into a part of the temple called the Holy of Holies, the most holy place. See it at the very end there where the Ark of the Covenant is? Only the high priest was allowed to go in there once a year to make a sacrifice for all of the people for their sin. The middle section called the holy place, that was where only priests could go, but all the priests could, not just the high priest. And then the front was where the people could go. You see the circle where the sea is? The sea, that's what they called the basin of water because it was so big, they didn't call it a basin anymore. They called it a sea. And Solomon made golden cows to hold the sea on its back. Twelve of them. That's how big it was. It was enormous. Actually, I think they were brass cows, oxen. And the people came to sacrifice and to celebrate because what God had done in helping Solomon and David complete this temple, and now they had a place where they could come, a permanent building where they could come and worship God, and they started to sacrifice. So the, I skipped number six, the ark Ark is the answer for number six. They made so many sacrifices that they couldn't even count how many sacrifices Solomon and the people made as they worshiped and celebrated God. And when they were finished, 
and the temple was complete. First Kings chapter six, and now going to verse, let me, oh, I'm going to go over to chapter eight and verse 10, make sure I'm in the right place here. Chapter eight, turn one more page, verse 10, and it came to pass when the priests Lost my place. When the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. So that's number seven. The glory of God came down like a cloud, a cloud representing his glory, filled the temple. Do you remember when Aunt Rachel talked about God's glory that Isaiah saw in the temple, and it was represented by a cloud. And when a cloud led the Israelites through the desert, and when a cloud was on top of Mount Sinai, when Moses met with God to get the Ten Commandments, over and over again, God uses a cloud to represent his glory and his presence. And this cloud filled the temple so much that the priests couldn't even worship God because it was so full. And they were so amazed at God's presence with them, and they started to worship God even more. And Solomon made a huge prayer and dedication to God, saying, thank you for what you've done and what you've done. Please help us now. Help us to be faithful to you. And when we mess up and we turn back to you and pray to you in this temple, forgive us. And when we worship you in the temple, accept our worship. And he made a beautiful prayer to God. Look at how big this temple is. Can you imagine how huge the cloud was that filled this temple? That's because God's glory is so amazing. Now, the temple doesn't exist anymore, but we still worship God. We worship God in a different way now. We don't make sacrifices anymore, do we? The priests would make sacrifice here. You see where that circle is? And they would have to make sacrifices over and over and over again, day after day after day, because people kept sinning. And this was a picture of something that was going to come, of someone that was going to be a sacrifice and die. Do you know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to be our sacrifice for the, in, in the temple. They sacrificed every day, but Jesus, he died once. And his one sacrifice was such a powerful sacrifice that it can pay for all the sins of all the world for all of eternity. And he wants to give you eternal life. He wants to be your sacrifice for you if you will accept him as your savior, I hope that if you don't know that Jesus is your savior and you've accepted his sacrifice to cover for your sins, then you'll talk to your parents or talk to me about it because this is so important. If you have accepted Jesus as your savior, then this is a wonderful opportunity to say thank you to God for what he did when he brought his glory into the temple and he started this picture of sacrifices so that one day his son could fill the promise and be our sacrifice. That's something we need to really say thank you to God for. So let's do that right now, okay? Dear God, thank you so much for sending your son to be our sacrifice. Thank you for the picture of the tent and the tabernacle and the temple and how these people sacrificed day after day but that you were the one sacrificed forever. That's amazing, Lord. Help us to remember that and be thankful. I pray that if these kids don't know you as their Savior, oh God, work in their hearts, open their minds, convict them of sin and righteousness and judgment and help them to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I love you guys. Hopefully you will all sign in for uh, Zoom chat this afternoon. When we do junior church, I'm looking forward to seeing you. All right? I love you all so much.